One of the biggest problems that I had within engineering firms is we did a lot of stuff repetitively. Now there are for sure times and places where you need to have um, things done manually, right? Somebody's got to go in there and set it all up, uh, put it all together. This is really in creating templates. That's the biggest thing is creating templates need to be done manually. Uh, there's not really a lot of software out there to automate this process of template creation and verbiage creation, right? How you denote things that needs to be thought through. And really that's a big skill set of engineers is figuring out how to say something, how to communicate what needs to be done on a project and how to let, you know, the contractor, the owner, uh, the people reading those drawings, how to price it, how to install it, how to build it, how to maintain it. All those things need to be done. And that is I think for a very, very long time, going to be a manual process, right? This is ultimately what engineers are hired to do is to think through these problems, think critically and allow that information and that knowledge to be transferred uh, via drawings to either, you know, the person installing it or to, you know, an owner or maintenance person down the road once the build is complete. So there's for sure some manual processes, but there's a lot of repetition uh, in what we do for drawings and putting buildings together. So really my biggest thing in uh, problem in engineering firms was kind of the lack of innovation in a lot of things. And I get there's a lot of things that need to be done certain ways, primarily legally and contractually, uh, which contracts are a whole other thing that I'll talk about later. But I get that there's a lot of systems and processes that work right? That are proven, that are tested, that just are good, right? You're not going to get sued or your uh, probability of being sued goes down. And that is all well and good, right? Nobody likes being in court. Nobody likes your being drugged into lawsuits and clear communication will for sure help reduce that. But in putting together drawings, there's a lot of things that could be done kind of in an automated or systematized manner that really help your engineers, your architects, your talent, do what they do best rather than, you know, setting up a project to where they need to create views and sheets uh, to where they're putting in elements to where they're um, doing things in a very systematic manner. You know, you're going to, if a room needs 40 foot candles of light, you know, you're going to put it into a program and figure out how many lights you need and what their spacing is. That's very systematic and a thing that can be automated for those kind of even illuminating, even illumination across the work plane versus some architectural piece, which would be like a lobby and atrium, uh, something that has some artistic flair that should always uh, really have that personal touch from an architect, a designer, uh, and, you know, maybe an engineer, depending on your firm and who, who's doing that, right? It could be your interiors person, your architect, uh, so your lighting designer or an engineer to pick some of those architectural pieces that again, should be designed. But again, a lot of back of house spaces, a lot of receptacle layouts, a lot of panel layouts are very systematic and rote uh, to where you kind of can automate a lot of the process in doing that. But even from there, uh, we talk about the drawings and put stuff together. There's a lot of other systems and processes that can be done in projects. This goes to reviewing documents. This comes to uh, workflows. A lot of this can be done in Microsoft through their, you know, Power Automate solution, which you're, you're paying for Microsoft 365. You can automate a lot of these tasks, right? If you get an email from somebody that's uh, in regards to a submittal or uh, in regards to uh, some RFI, right? You can automate how those workflows go, even just with an Outlook on moving them to specific folders or forwarding it to the right person on your team towards the project manager, you don't have to necessarily like comb through all of your emails, uh, especially if you're getting hundreds a day uh, that need to just be forwarded to teammates, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do in process automation uh, from drawings to paperwork to whatever it might be in helping you and your firm uh, do what you do best, right? And I don't have to do with these little things, the, these time consuming and tedious tasks that really just end up ruining your day a lot of the time. I mean, for, for sure, there's some points where like doing the rote and tedious stuff is just relaxing because you know how to do it. You don't have to think about it um, and can be, you know, pretty soothing. But at the same time, you know, it's not the best use of your time, your engineer's time, especially your senior staff, if they're having to model and uh, go through drawings to create plans and 
everything in Revit. So just some tips on how to think really about automation uh, from drawings and paperwork to just your email to how you deal with submittals, RFIs, how you deal with kind of the bulk of work that really just needs to be sent to the right people on your team uh, for them to look at. So some things to think about really in automation technology and making higher use of your time. So again, my biggest problem with engineering firms uh, that I worked in was really, you know, I got an engineering degree, I <laughs> licensed electrical engineer in six states, and uh, I really didn't get that degree to do drafting work. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that feel the exact same way as I do that, you know, we're, we're engineers, we have uh, talent for solving big problems, and we want to do that on a regular basis. And uh, drafting is really not solving any of those problems. So for engineering firm leaders out there, uh, talk to your people, they probably feel the same way as I do. Because uh, again, they didn't go to school for four years and pay a, a lot of money to go to engineering school to only draft and uh, mark up red lines and that kind of stuff. So anyway, for those of you out there, hope this helps and uh, give you a little bit uh, insight on my experience to engineering firms.